Hey there and welcome to So Crafty with Connie. Today I wanted to show you how to make a weighted blanket two different ways using batting or polyfill. Here's an example of one using polyfill and here's an exa another example of one using batting. They're both really easy to do and um, if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started with what supplies you need to have for this. Okay, for the supplies, you need fabric for the top and the bottom of the blanket. Cotton or flannel works really good for this. And however big you want the blanket, you can just cut it out to that size. You need poly polyfill or batting, whichever one you decide to use. You need weighted pellets you could get at any craft school store. A scale, that'll make it easier to measure how many pellets you have. A ruler, a washable pencil. You need some cups and then plastic cups and then a funnel. That just makes it easier to fill the squares with the pellets. Okay, then the next step is deciding how much you want your blanket to weigh. If you're making your blanket for a 120 pound person, then you would multiply that by 0.10. Um, the ideal weight for these blankets is 10% of the person's body weight. So however much that person weighs, multiply that by 0.10 and that'll be how much your blanket needs to weigh. And then in order how to figure out how many pellets you need for each square, um, just take however much you want your blanket to weigh. For instance, 12 pounds is what I have here. And then you want to turn the 12 pounds into ounces. So 12 times 16 is 192 ounces. And then you'll divide that by the 90 squares, which give you, gives you the 2.13 ounce per square. And then you can recheck yourself by multiplying the ounces per square times how many squares, which is 191.7. And then divide that by the 16 ounces, which is 1.1. Uh, 11.98 pounds and then just round up and if you're a little off it's okay um, so let's go ahead and get started with the polyfill weighted blanket the first thing you're going to do is take two your two fabric pieces for a blanket and lay them down right sides together with the batting on the top and then you're going to pin all the way around it now what we're going to do is sew three edges and you're going to start about an inch from the top and you're just going to sew around three edges and you're going to leave one end open and my suggestion would leave would be to leave one of the short ends open and I've got my mom here she's she's helping me out by sewing it for me Okay, so you're going to sew one seam. I'd say sew it at least at least an inch from the edge. And then you're going to go in and sew two seams. That just helps it stay more secure. So if you can see here, she's got one seam down, and now she's going down another seam. And you can leave one inch seam allowance, two inch seam allowance. It's, it's up to you. Now you're going to sew up those three sides. And then when you get through with that, we're just going to trim it just a little bit. So we're going to trim our corners at an angle so it'll be easier to turn and poke the corners out when we turn it right side out. And then we're just trimming the edges just a little bit to make it a little neater. And again, we have that double seam to make it uh, more secure. Now, now we are turning it right sides out. We've taken all the pins out. And we're turning it right side out. And then we want to make sure we get the edges nice and flat. And then make sure the corners are nicely poked out as well. When you get through with that, if you want, you can um, iron it. But you don't have to. We, we, didn't, we didn't do that. But we're just uh, laying it flat and just trying to smooth everything out. And again, make sure you have your corners poked out nicely. Okay, now we've got it all nice and laid out flat. And now I'm making my first row of columns. And I've got my ruler. It's about six inches wide, I believe. And I've got one of those water-soluble pencils. 
uh, for tracing and or for making uh, patterns on fabric. And then I'm just drawing a line all the way up, making my columns, and I'm going to do that the whole width of the blanket. And again, I, you can you can make your columns however wide you want them. And I just thought six inches was was a good was a good width for them to be at it on this particular size blanket. This blanket, I think I wanted it to be for like a five or six year old, so it was going to be three and a half pounds, I believe. It's been a couple of months since we actually made these, so <laughs> I don't remember remember too well what exactly how how much we wanted them to weigh but again I'm just continuing making my columns and I'm doing that I'm going to do that the same thing repeat it all the way to the uh, end of the blanket the width of the blanket so those are my columns and now I am continuing doing the columns. I believe now I'm on my third column. And again, I'm just going to keep doing this all the way to the other end of the blanket. Okay, so I finished my columns and now I'm doing my rows. So I'm doing my rows from one end of the blanket to the other end. And I'm using the same ruler and I'm doing six inches again. So basically, um, I'm just doing the same exact thing, but I'm just going up the blanket, making rows. And you'll just continue to do that all the way to the other end of the blanket. Again, this, this is an easy step, but it is a little time consuming. And if you want, you could get fabric that already has squares on it, uh, like gingham or check, and then you could decide, count how, you know, the rows, however big you want them to be. And your lines will already be drawn, so you don't have to do this step. But um, I kind of like this fabric, so I wanted to make one of these. Um, this one's actually going to be given to a foster, a foster place to give to foster kids. And so again, I'm just going up the edge of the fabric, and this is actually the back of the blanket. Okay, so here I'm done. I'm showing you my lines, my columns, my rows, where they crisscross. So you have all the squares there. And I wanted to give y'all a good picture of it. And you can get these lines out with water later on or scrub them or they'll eventually go out. Now this part I didn't put in the video, but um, you're going to sew down each column and you're going to start about an inch from the top. And you're just going to sew down each column. Not rows, just the column. Now we are beginning to fill the squares with pellets and polyfill and we're working on the first row now now I honestly cannot remember how much we wanted this blanket to weigh but I wanted my pellets and my polyfill and everything to weigh 1.3 ounces and I believe my bowl was 3 ounces and I apologize I can't remember but um, Anyway, just say if I wanted, say I wanted my blanket to be three and a half pounds, I would multiply three and a half by 16, which, by 16 ounces, which gives me 56 ounces. And then I wanted to, since I have 72 squares in that blanket, I divided the 56 uh, ounces to, by the 72 squares and I got 1.3 ounces. So that's where I got that from. But you want to make sure if you have a bowl, you might want to take the bowl a weight away, and it'd probably be an ounce. So if it's a few ounces off, that will be all right. And so what I figured out here was I first got the funnel, and I started pouring the pellets in the funnel. And my funnel uh, was pretty small, so I couldn't fill them in all at once. I had to kind of 
wiggle it around to to uh, make them go all the way down. And then this is the first row, so you want to make sure all those pellets get down to the very bottom. And you don't want any of them stuck in the middle because then your needle could run over it and it could break your needle. That did happen to us uh, once or twice. So I just make sure all the pellets are all the way down at the bottom. And then I got a ruler. I had to find something that would make it easy to push the polyfill all the way down because it was kind of wanting to stick. <laughs> but I finally found this ruler and just started kind of pushing it down. And it worked. It worked pretty good. I just pushed the polyfill all the way down uh, to the end of that first row. And then, and then you do, do it all over again. You weigh your pellets and put your polyfill in there and then fill up the second row. And you just keep doing that for all the rows. Now right now I'm just smoothing it down and making sure all the pellets are at the end and there are no pellets on that row line that I drew to um, to sew it. So now we're going to start again on the next the next row. I'm just weighing everything and make sure I have the right amount to go into the each column. And it takes a little practice, but once you get going and you kind of realize how many pellets, it, it kind of makes it a little bit easier because then you can just kind of eyeball it pretty good. And again, like I said, if it's an ounce or two over, it's okay. Don't don't be too don't worry about that. It'll it'll still work really good. Okay, now I got some polyfill and I'm weighing that to see how much that's gonna be. It's a little bit too much, so I'll take a little off. A little more off. Okay, and then this particular with the polyfill, you want to put the pellets in first and then the polyfill. That would make it easier to make sure that all of the pellets are at the end or at the end of the row. And then after I poured my pellets in there, I'm just kind of shaking it. I'm shaking it to make sure all the pellets go down to the very end. And again, this is the first row. Or the first, the, yeah, the first row that we're doing. But this is my second column that I filled. And then I'm just feeling and making sure all the pellets are all the way down at the end. And I can feel a few there, so I just kind of scrape them down. Okay, now I'm going to get the polyfill. And then get my ruler. And then I'm pushing the polyfill down. And again, the ruler makes it a lot easier. I tried other things, but some things it just went right through the polyfill. It just did not work. But I finally found the ruler and that, that, that worked really good. And you'll, as you go and do this, you'll find different knacks. Uh, and things you weren't learned that will work faster and easier and this is kinda what I learned with the next blanket that I made with the polyfill. That's where I got all the cups um, where I got all the cups in and it it was it went a lot faster and also making the one with the batting is a lot faster because you don't have to worry about weighing the polyfill also. 
but I do think the polyfill one is a little cuter, um, but it's a little more time consuming. But either one of them, either blanket works really great, works really great for the purpose. Okay, so now I got the polyfill again in the second column. And again, just making sure that all the beads are down at the bottom because you don't want to hit one of those with your uh, needle because it will break it. And then basically, you just repeat this process through each column. And then once you get each column filled, you're going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to sew that row on that line that you previously made. Okay, so now my mom has it and now we're going to sew the first row. And all she's doing is just following the, sign, the line that I drew for the row. And she's back stitching right here. And then she's just going to sew it closed. And it could be a little a little tough to handle, but again, you kind of figure out your your own knack. So now she's just making sure there's no pellets, and then we're just sewing down that first row. Nope, oh, looks like she found a pellet, so she's trying to push it out of the way. And then you want at the beginning and end of each row as you're sewing it, you want to make sure you, you backstitch just to secure that on each end. And again, as you're sewing, you'll you'll think of some some of your own necks that will help you that you think, oh, well, this will be a lot easier because that's that's what I do as I'm making something that I follow. Someone showed me, I end up changing it slightly somehow to make it easier for me. And then, as you can see, the polyfill, the puffy little squares with the polyfill in it. And I kind of put the polyfill in last, too, to be on the back side of the blanket. That way, when someone's undering, under it, it's more the polyfill is, is on them more than, than the pellets are. And now she's at the end and she's going to back stitch right here. All right, now we have gone back to filling up more columns. And this is kind of where I figured out oh, I'm going to get eight cups and then I'm going to fill the eight cups up because I had eight columns. And I filled the eight cups up with polyfill. I mean, I'm sorry, I filled the eight cups up with the pellets. And then I'm measuring the polyfill by itself. So I think I needed three ounces or so. And then I filled up the second, the second column. And now we're sewing, looks like we're sewing the very end. We sewed all of the columns. And the rows, we got them all filled up. And so this is the very end. And what you're going to do at the top is you're just going to fold the top down, pin it, because you should have left like an inch at the top. And you're just going to take the ends and you're just going to fold it down and pin it. And then you're just going to sew it closed and backstitch at the front, backstitch at the back, at the end. And if you want to make two stitches, two seams, you can do that also.
with the first process of filling up the columns that I showed you, you're just going to repeat that for each column, fill each column up, and then sew the row, and then go back and fill the next column up, and sew the row, and so on. And so there's the double seam. Yes, she just, we did a double seam on that one just to be a little bit more secure. Okay, so that's the polyfill blanket. There's the front of the polyfill blanket. And it was pretty easy, pretty time consuming, but it worked out good. And so now we're going to start on the blanket with the batting. Okay, the weighted blanket using the batting was easier. Um, it, uh, it did take less time because we didn't have to measure the polyfill. Um, it was already, you know, the batting is what helped with that part. And so to get started with this one, again, you need the same supplies except for the polyfill. But you're going to lay your fabric pieces, um, actually I laid the batting piece down first. So this is my batting piece. I laid it down first and then I took my two pieces of fabric that I wanted to be the blanket. I already cut those out to what size that I wanted. And I wanted to make this one I think for like a two year old so I wanted it to weigh about two and a half pounds if I can remember correctly. Again, I did these. I did this one a while back as well. Um, anyway, so I made these with flannel. So I laid the batting down first. And then I laid down the backing and the front of the blanket right sides together. So I laid those down on top of the batting. And then... Um, the batting, of course, is a little bigger, and that's what you want. You want the batting to be a little bit bigger than your your blanket uh, blanket fabrics. Okay, and so then I just trimmed off my batting. So I just cut around my batting, and again, I made it a little bigger than what my fabric pieces were. And uh, I made sure that I pinned it, pinned it down pretty good. You want to make sure that you you pinned all the way the edges and and stuff really good, but not too close to the edge because you want to sew around the edge. Okay, and then this is where I pinned them. I think I use safety pins or quilting pins, something like that. And so I pinned all the way around the edge. And then you're going to sew three of the edges, and I would leave the short side open first. Or I would leave the short end open. So again, sew all the way around your edges. You can do two seams. There are my edges right there that I sewed around. And I did do two seams just to make sure that it is secure. Now I'm taking my pins out and I have turned it right side out. So I sewed three edges and I turned it right side out and I poked out my corners really good and uh, smoothed it out really good. And the top, the edge top up there is, is the open part of it. And now I drew my columns. I drew my columns and uh, my rows, and if you want to see how to do this, just kind of rewind to the beginning. And um, now I sewed my columns. I started an inch from the top, as you can see here, and I sewed my root columns, double stitching at the top. And now I'm figuring out how much I need to put the pellets in. And I've got that. I've, I went on ahead and used the formula and figured that out. 
So now for when you fill in with the batting, you want to fill in with the batting on the bottom. So I made this little funnel tube, which I thought was a lot easier, and it was just a um, wrapping paper uh, tube. And so I just poured the pellets in there and made sure it went all the way to the bottom. And this was a lot easier. And again, you want to make sure the batting is going to be on the back of the blanket. So that way when someone's laying under it, they don't have the pellets laying on them. They have the, the batting part. And so I just went to each column and filled them up with pellets. And then I sewed each row as I went. And again, you can see this at the beginning of the video. It's the same way, just not the polyfill. So when I got through filling everything with pellets and sewing my rows, then I sewed up the top, as you can see there, and I pinned it, sewed the top twice, and then here is the finished prod product. And it's not as poofy as the, the uh, polyfill one, but it still works just as good. And that's it. If you have any questions, Please let me know. You can send me a comment. I hope this helped you. And uh, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more sewing tutorials. And I sure appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. And have a great day.